E, we welcome Senator Scott, a member of this committee, Senator Lieberman, a distinguished former member of this, of this body who will, who will make introductory remarks. Uh, and, and following the nominee's uh, comments, we'll have uh, a five-minute round of questions. One note, we have capital officers here today who will remove anyone who attempts to disrupt the hearing. This is the first meeting of our committee in the new Congress. Uh, this is a committee, as, as will probably become evident as we go along, that has some considerable differences of opinion on a variety of issues. But we have found that we can sometimes resolve them in important ways. Uh, last year, we passed what the Majority Leader, Senator McConnell, said was the most important bill of the Congress, 21st Century Cures. And the year before, a bill fixing No Child Left Behind, which President Obama called a Christmas miracle, plus 33 other bills signed by the President, 33 total. I want to thank Senator Murray and the Democrats, as well as the Republicans on the committee, for, for operating in that fashion. We've done that by showing courtesy to ourselves and to our witnesses, which I hope will be evident today. Before my opening remarks, I'd like to make a word about process. More than 25 years ago, Ms. DeVos, I was sitting where you sat. You are sitting. And uh, as the nominee for U.S. Secretary of Education and former Senator Howard Metzabam of Ohio said to me, well, Governor, I've heard some disturbing things about you, but I'm not going to bring them up here. Senator Nancy Kassebaum of Kansas looked at him and said, well, Howard, I think you just did. And with that, he put a secret hold on me and held me up for two or three months. You won't have to go through that because we abolished secret holes not long ago. And because we're going to apply what I would call the golden rule, the one that comes from the book of Matthew, uh, which applies the same procedures to you uh, that we used in 2001 and 2005 for President George W. Bush's education secretary nominees, and in 2009 and 2016 for President Obama's education secretary nominees. So we'll consider you and then vote uh, just as we did them. Arne Duncan, President Obama's first education secretary, the hearing was on the 13th of January, and he was confirmed a week later. John King, the hearing was on February the 25th, and he was confirmed two and a half weeks later. We've received from Mrs. DeVos, and each senator has had available uh, since January 4th, the committee's required forms. The rules require them to be in more than a week in advance. The FBI background check has been done, and Senator Murray and I have heard the results. Mrs. DeVos has provided the Office of Government Ethics on December 12th with all the relevant information about her financial affairs. We will have a letter from that office on how which will be an agreement between Mrs. DeVos and that office on how to deal with any conflicts of interest before we vote in committee on her nomination. Now, as for questions, Mrs. DeVos has met with each of us in our offices. Several of us have written questions already given to her. Today, we'll each have five minutes for further questions. Again, I'm applying the golden rule. One round of five-minute questions, as was, the, as was the case, for both of President Obama's education nominees, was the case for me too in 1991. Uh, in those cases, following the five minute round, the chairman and one member ask additional questions, and we'll do that again as we did before. I'll ask questions and I'll ask Senator Murray if she would like to do the same. Each of us will have a chance to ask additional questions in a reasonable number in writing by the close of business on Thursday at 5 p.m. And then we will meet an executive session next Tuesday to consider Mrs. DeVos's nomination and other business if the final Office of Government, Opera uh, of, uh, final Office of Government Ethics letter is received by this Friday in order to give senators a chance to review it before Tuesday. Now, following my opening remarks, Senator Murray will make hers, and then we'll hear from Senator Scott and Senator Lieberman, and then we'll hear from Mrs. DeVos. Betsy DeVos, in my opinion, is on our children's side. She's devoted her life to helping mainly low-income children have better choices of schools. 
Most of the criticism I've heard of her amounts to three things. One, she supports public charter schools. Two, she supports giving lower income parents more choices of schools for their children. And three, she's used her considerable wealth and effectiveness to advance those ideas. I believe she's in the mainstream of public opinion and her critics are not. First, let's take the idea of charter schools. They are public schools with fewer government rules, fewer union rules, so teachers have more freedom to teach and parents have more freedom to choose the school that best suits their child. Nothing new about it. In 1991 and 92, President H.W. Bush proposed start from scratch schools. He called them New American Schools. He raised $70 million for New American Schools Development Corporation to encourage innovative ideas. Then in 1993 in January, in my last act as President Bush's education secretary, I wrote every single superintendent in the country, and I asked them to try something that was invented in Minnesota by the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, something called charter schools. There were 12 of them then. Since then, there's been broad support for the idea. Albert Shanker, the late head of the American Federation of Teachers, endorsed those charter schools. In 1977, 97, President Clinton said, we need 3,000 charter schools by 2002. Senator Hillary Clinton supported charter schools. President George W. Bush supported charter schools. President Obama supports charter schools. His first education secretary, Arne Duncan, described himself as a, quote, strong supporter of charter schools. John King, the current education secretary, founded a charter school or ran a system of charter schools. Congress in 1994, 98, 2001, 2015, always bipartisan, usually by huge margins, supported charter schools. 43 states and the District of Columbia operate charter schools. So over nearly 30 years, those 12 Democratic farmer labor charter schools in Minnesota have grown to 6,800 public charter schools. 6% 6 of America's public school students attend them. So who's in the mainstream here? The Democratic Farmer Labor Party in Minnesota, Presidents Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, the last six U.S. education secretaries, the U.S. Congress, 43 states, the District of Columbia, Betsy DeVos, or her critics. I think pretty obviously she's in the mainstream. She's on the side of our children. Let's go to the other criticism giving low-income parents more choices of schools that wealthy Americans already have. More specifically, the objection is that public money shouldn't follow poor children to an accredited school of their parents' choice, public, private, or religious. Arguing against that is arguing against the most successful social policy this Congress has ever enacted, the GI Bill for Veterans which appropriated federal dollars to follow veterans to the school of their choice, Notre Dame, Yeshiva, Maryville College, University of Tennessee, any accredited institution. It produced the greatest generation, and it produced a model for all of our federal aid for colleges. $29 billion of Pell Grants this year are in vouchers. They, go, they follow the student to the school of their choice. Nearly $100 billion in new student loans follow the student to the school of their choice. Why is such a great idea for college students deemed to be such a dangerous idea for K through 12 students? Many of us believe competition produces the best colleges and it might produce the best schools. Many scholars have suggested that Ted Sizer, distinguished educator, suggested a poor kid's bill of rights 40 years ago. Today, 50 states provide parents more choices of public schools 15% attend a school other than their school of residence through open enrollment. 44 states allow sending children to public schools outside their district. 34 states within their district. In addition to that, nearly 400,000 children are served by 50 private school choice programs across 25 states, the District of Columbia, and Douglas County, Colorado. Congress passed bipartisan legislation with Senator Lieberman at the head of it, creating the D.C. School Voucher Program in 2003 to date helping 6,100 children, more than 1,000 children this year standing in line waiting for that opportunity. So there's been growing support since President H.W. Bush proposed the GI Bill for kids to let states who wanted to try expanding choice for low-income students to today, where 2015, 
Forty-five United States senators supported the scholarships for kids that I proposed and that Senator Scott proposed for students with disability. Forty-five United States senators thought that was a good idea. According to the 2013 Lunch Global Public Opinion Survey, 73% of Americans support school choice. 64% say that if given the financial opportunity, they would send one or all their children to a different school. So who's in the mainstream here? The GI Bill for veterans, Pell Grants, student loans, both President Bush, the President-elect, 25 states, Congress and the DC voucher program, 45 US senators in 2015, 73% of Americans, Betsy DeVos or her critics, pretty obvious. She's in the mainstream. She's on the side of our children. The final criticism is she's used her wealth to support these ideas. I think she deserves credit for that, not criticism. Would her critics be happier if she'd spent her time and her money trying to deny children more choices of schools that wealthy families already have? We're fortunate that Betsy DeVos is the nominee for US Education Secretary. She is and has been on our children's side I support her confirmation and look forward to working with her. Senator Murray. Well, thank you very much, Chairman Alexander. I look forward to working with you and all of our colleagues in Congress. I want to welcome our new members on this committee, Senators Kane, Hassan, and Young.